When supplies ran thin and resources were redirected toward tanks, planes and ammunition, World War II forced militaries to innovate with what little remained. One of the least known yet most remarkable wartime materials came not from factories or steel mills, but from scrap piles. Ordinary shredded paper, oil and glue transformed into a fabric so durable that it replaced canvas in tents, uniforms and even field equipment. It was waterproof, resistant to tearing and in some cases tough enough to deflect small shrapnel fragments. While it has nearly vanished from modern awareness, this paper fibre cloth was one of the quiet triumphs of wartime ingenuity, born from desperation and refined into a practical, field-proven technology. The material was born out of wartime shortages and resource desperation. By the early 1940s, the production of cotton canvas and linen had nearly collapsed in several European nations. Strategic fibres were diverted to parachutes and bandages, leaving nothing for shelter canvas, map cases or weatherproof bags. To fill the gap, Military engineers and industrial chemists looked toward a material everyone had in abundance waste paper. What began as an experiment in cheap packaging rapidly evolved into a strong, flexible fabric made from pulp paper mixed with natural oil and animal-based glue. Once treated and dried, the result was astonishingly resistant to both moisture and tearing. German and Soviet forces first began experimenting with this mixture for field tarpaulins and ammunition covers. Soon after, British and Allied research departments followed suit, adapting the process to create a waterproof layer that could be mass-produced without straining fibre reserves. In some cases, it replaced canvas entirely in non-load-bearing gear, such as pack covers and waterproof satchels. Tests showed it resisted prolonged rain exposure better than untreated cotton, and when reinforced with thin fabric or mesh layers, it could even withstand small metal impacts during bombing raids. The secret lay in the chemistry of pulp, oil, and glue. The strength of the paper fibre cloth came from how its ingredients bonded together at a microscopic level. Shredded cellulose fibres from recycled paper provided the structural backbone. When soaked in animal glue and boiled linseed or tongue oil, these fibres became coated and fused into a dense mat that behaved more like hide than paper. Once pressed flat and air-dried, the sheet gained flexibility, toughness and remarkable water resistance. The oil polymerized within the glue matrix, forming a natural varnish that sealed out moisture while still allowing the material to bend without cracking. To produce this material in the field, engineers used whatever was available. Newspapers, maps and packaging paper were torn into small pieces and soaked in warm water until soft. A thick paste of glue, usually made from animal hides or bones, was added, followed by oil. When mixed thoroughly and spread in thin layers on mesh or cloth, the mixture hardened into a waterproof sheet once dry. Variants even used natural resins or waxes instead of oil, creating coatings that resisted snow and ice buildup. Modern hobbyists and experimental survivalists have replicated this process using boiled linseed oil and wood glue mixed into paper pulp. 
The result, once dried under pressure, creates a flexible, leathery surface ideal for tool sheaths, waterproof covers, or improvised bags, proving that the principle still holds decades later. Records from 1943 describe how the Soviet Army used this composite paper cloth to line winter dugouts and bunker walls. Its insulating and waterproof qualities made it invaluable for preventing frost buildup and leaks during spring thaw. The British Home Guard, meanwhile, used it for temporary rain capes and protective hoods during air raids. In naval settings, the Japanese military experimented with similar paper fiber composites to reinforce uniforms and wrap electrical wiring aboard ships. One of the most striking applications came in field hospitals, where the material's water resistance made it ideal for stretcher covers and supply rolls. Some versions were even impregnated with wax and resin to create a near rubberized texture. Despite being made from paper, these sheets could last months under harsh use, and when damaged they were easy to patch by softening the area with heat and pressing in new pulp. For survivalists and historical enthusiasts today, this technology represents a forgotten alternative to synthetic tarps and heavy canvas. Creating your own version is entirely possible with simple materials. A blend of one part shredded paper, one part water and a quarter part glue, thickened with a tablespoon of boiled linseed oil per cup of pulp, forms a strong base. Spread this onto a piece of burlap or cotton sheet, then let it dry for two to three days. The end result is a flexible waterproof layer that can be cut, stitched and folded much like leather. The true test of the paper fibre cloth came during the bombings of major European cities. When shrapnel rained down, storage tents and sandbag covers made of this material showed surprising resistance. Instead of tearing or catching fire easily like untreated canvas, the oil-treated pulp layers absorbed and dispersed small impacts. Some reports from the British War Office note that paper fibre field tarps could be reused even after near misses from incendiary fragments, something cotton could rarely survive. It also demonstrated an unusual resistance to mould. Traditional canvas, when stored damp, developed mildew quickly. The oil-infused paper composite, on the other hand, repelled both water and bacteria, meaning it could be rolled up wet and still remain usable weeks later. This made it invaluable in coastal outposts and naval installations where humidity destroyed fabric supplies. What made this material so extraordinary wasn't that it outperformed canvas in every way but that it did so using literal waste. In the resource-starved world of wartime Europe, it represented efficiency through necessity, a blend of chemistry and practicality that solved multiple problems with materials others discarded. The story of the Second World War paper fibre cloth is more than a technical curiosity. It's a blueprint for sustainable design. It showed how ingenuity under constraint could create something durable, useful and renewable. In an era where modern waterproofing relies heavily on plastics and synthetic coatings, this forgotten wartime method proves that natural composites can still meet the same challenges. Whether used to craft field gear, replicas, eco-friendly tarps or experimental bushcraft materials, 
the process behind this paper fiber fabric stands as a timeless lesson. Strength and resilience can be built from the simplest resources if one understands how to bind them together. For those who study history not just to remember but to apply its lessons, this is one of the most practical examples of wartime innovation still worth reviving. Subscribe to In the Beginning for more deep dives into the lost technologies and survival methods that shaped history's toughest generation, and share this video with others who value the ingenuity that kept humanity alive when the world was at its hardest.